all over. Okay. All right, today we have Lindsey Crawford, Wisconsin licensed realtor. How are you doing today, Lindsey? I'm doing fine, yourself? I'm doing well. So, I'm going to start off asking him what it is you do and how long have you been doing this? Okay, so I'm a, I'm a realtor and I'm licensed here in the state of Wisconsin. I'm based out of Milwaukee and I help people find, purchase homes, and sell their existing homes. Um, I have been around the field for about five or six years, but I've been licensed um, a little over a year now. And what is your favorite part about being a realtor so far? My favorite part about being a realtor is the people interaction. So I'm um, an educator at heart, so I get to work with uh, clients and you know teach them or teach them as much as they want to know about the home buying process or the home selling process or the negotiation process. But I would say it's the um, you know just interaction with people and helping them with a um, a really, really important financial decision. Um, I have a question. You said that you have been around the field for five years, but licensed for one. So can you expand upon that? What, what were you doing, I guess, in that five-year period? And now, what does it look like now that you've been licensed? So I... Um, you know, just working on like odd jobs, um, helping uh, family members and people in my circle. They do different, um, it's a lot of different spaces within real estate. So you have um, appraisals, wholesalers, people that are fixing and flipping, contractors, um, people that do inspections, right? So um, a lot of people in my circle are uh, mainly investors and contractors. So I get to kind of see, um, I was able to see those processes from the beginning all the way through and even go in and, and, and doing some sweat labor. So going in and priming and painting and plumbing, like just doing random things that really um, piqued my interest about the industry. Um, but I also wanted to, I wanted to get in the industry, but I wanted to uh, be in an area where I would have, I want to be on the contract side. I want to do negotiating. I wanted to learn what that process was and that's why I chose um, sales. I as far as the license go, like how difficult was that process for you to get licensed to be a realtor? Very interesting. So, yeah. uh, March, well, no, it was like February, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, the pandemic hadn't hit yet. Okay. But um, I, I've i been kind of putting it off. Hey, I'm getting my real estate license, putting mm -hmm. it off. And I was like, I need to, I, I felt stagnant. So I was like, I need, to, I need to do this now. So one day I made a decision. I went to Shore West and found out um, what I, or I called, found out what I needed. I went up there like that week, mm -hmm. paid for my books, paid for everything I needed. Um, and they gave me like six months to complete the course. I think it was six months to complete the course or get my license or something. But you have to complete the course before you take the test. Um, and of course, within that time, I think it was like March, the pandemic hit. Yeah. So stuff had like, Shut, you know, we didn't know what was going on, stuff was shutting down. So I was about two months into my studying. Um, the coursework stalled, like we couldn't go in person anymore, so everything was virtual. So thankfully I had a hybrid course where they gave me a flash drive with the courses and I could listen and follow along and do it, which was fine. Um, but uh, uh, that made me more focused. I set my test up. I set my, t when, when the pandemic hit, I set my test up right away because I knew that stuff was going to be shut down and I might might not be, I don't know, mm -hmm. next time stuff is going to be open. So right. I set it up for June, and I went and took it first try. Uh, passed my test. So. Do you feel like you hit it at a good time? Like Because yes. I know the market went crazy, but I don't know, like, in I not knowing anything about the industry, is it was it a good time for you to get in, or was it overwhelming? It was a good time for me. I'm, uh, I don't know, I thrive in chaos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes sense, so it was kind of cool because I don't uh, this is this is all I know. Like this yeah. market, they're talking about this market, this market. I'm like, well, I'm new. Like, what is it? So right. I see it. You know, it's it's you know stuff. Prices are high. It's a, a, a seller's market and all mm -hmm. these things. And as I work with clients, like I'm experiencing it um, day after day. So um, I think it was a great time for me because I don't know 
um, when I would have done it if I didn't yeah. do it at that moment. Right. Um, so I think everything worked out well. Okay. So what does your day-to-day look like typically? Okay, so I work for a, um, a small firm, uh, Ideal Realty, based out of, based out of here mm-hmm. in Milwaukee. And um, I can't think of our roster, but we're, we're a small firm. Um, I have um, a lot of autonomy. I have a lot of one-on-one mm-hmm. mentorship. Um, so I have uh, you know flexibility to set my schedule and my clients um, as I see fit. Um, but I get as much or as little assistance, you know, as I need to kind of um, figure things out and uh, make sure things are done correctly. Uh, me personally, I'm, I'm the type of person I like to I like to figure things out, give it a try, and if mm-hmm. you know if, if it's not going well, you know, I'll reach back and, and figure it out. So. Um, that that formula has worked out for me so far. Okay. What would you say is the biggest key to success? Not mature religion that you learned. Biggest key to success might be um, communication. So staying in tune with um, clients, um, just people, right? So what I've learned so far is that it's it's a, a, a people industry. So. In the same way that you go into the store and you expect, um, you know, good customer service or people to be respectable and, and build like small a small rapport during that time, it's the same way um, mm-hmm. with with real estate. And just for me, like I'm not walking around asking people if they want to sell their homes, right? I'm I'm working from inside out. So the people I know, um, I, I've had more people approach me about it, like, "Hey, I heard you're a realtor. Can you help me? Oh, yeah, I can help you." Mm-hmm. You know, um, or word of mouth. So if I'm doing good business. I've got referrals in that way, like, hey, you helped my mm-hmm. friend, and she told me um, that you know you'd be a really good resource to help. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's just a people business, you know, mm-hmm. cordial, uh, man of my word, and you know, I try to do good business because that's that's the thing that that sells you more than anything if you um, did right. things the right way and, and help people um, achieve their goals. Would you? Could you identify like a, a specific barrier that you may have faced in this process of, you know, becoming a realtor? Um, I, you, I mean, maybe beyond just like the coursework, which it seems like kind of things went smooth for you, but is there anything? Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, well, first it's all commission based. Oh, yeah. And so um, I have a family, yeah. um, I have children, yeah. right? And I got other things that, that I'm involved in, so. Right. It's that, so I'm um, explain to my wife, like, hey, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I gotta figure this thing out. Yeah. But, um, you know, my, my family is very supportive, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm figuring it out yeah. day after day, and I always point to um, the instance, so I had some samples, uh, just like contracts, so like an offer to purchase. When I first started, it took me a really long time to like draft one, so someone, I had an investor, he's like, hey, I want to buy this house, write it up for me, which means, you know, um, create an offer to purchase mm-hmm. to get to the seller. And I'm like, cool. And it takes me like three hours to do it because it's all this language mm-hmm. and it's like legally binding language. And if you have to check these boxes and you have to know what to check and what it means and all that, and I had to like figure what I chose to figure out, you know, all, yeah. every line, what it means, why yeah. and what. And... <clears throat> I, I got my first accepted offer and I was like, I can do this. Mm-hmm. You know, so I got my time down, like I can I can do an offer to purchase in thirty minutes. You That's know, just awesome. because I you know, I've been training myself to kinda of, kinda of do that. So um I figure if, if I can figure something like that out, I think I can um find my way through and, and to success here. Um another barrier that I kinda of faced is uh I'm from the city, mm-hmm. so I went to NPS, and I, my mm-hmm. college work, my grad work here. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the city, you know, it's always changing. Um, but I'm always kind of torn between, um, you know, the, the Milwaukee that I know and the Milwaukee that's, you know, that's mm-hmm. up and coming and gentrification. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have an investor here that, you know, a, a very, very lucrative opportunity, but you know, maybe they live out of state. You know, what does that yeah. mean for this community? And so it's just like, you know, thinking about some of those things and, and trying to figure out the, the best ways to, um, uh, you know, be successful and serve my community. I never even that, thought about like that. Too, so, um, like, I just, like, that's got to be tough. Like, because, yeah, you, you, 
you survive. Like you just said, this is your income, right? This is you have a family. You have to think about those things, and 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 it could bring you more clients out, right? And other success, and then but you also that consciousness, right? Of like yeah. thinking about what's best. Yeah, yeah, and that, and yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm reading the book, um, The Color of Law. I forget the author, but it kind of talks about the um, you know discrimination really of people of color mm -hmm. in like real estate and this you know these spaces. Um, and you know, just reading that and, and being able to to be in the industry and be in the field, like mm -hmm. it's it's really cool to be able to impact change in a, a different way yeah. than I have in the past. So, would you be able to oh, oh, expand on that? Sorry, expand on that a little bit more too. Just like you know, like we majority of people that we serve are you know people of color. I would say we're pretty split between you know males and females, but you know, would you talk about how your experience and how you think it might be different or what you faced in that? As far as like being a man of color oh. in, 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 in oh, the industry. In the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, I don't know if I've had any um, like overt experience okay. as of right now. Um, or at this moment, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm not sure. I, okay. I, I, I mean, hey, that. that's 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 a good thing. Yeah, that's said. definitely. It's, it's been yeah. very, like, uh, I mean, I've, I've had clients that, um, you know, made very <laughs> big cash offers mm -hmm. for properties, and it's just business as usual. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been really around that. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't really speak okay. to that okay. at the moment, but it's, it's there mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, doing my research and yeah. um, doing the history on, um, Real estate and the housing market and restrictive covenants and all of these things that um, are like deep seated in, yeah. in some of these areas. Like it's it's present, but you know yeah. sometimes it's more subtle. Right. Okay. How long did it take for you to close your first deal? Oh, first deal. Okay, so technically, I kind of uh, I like middleman the deal. So I I found. I found the seller, I found the buyer. I did everything but write up the offer, pretty much, because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I had to pay pay a fee or something for my, my membership. So it was really a referral, it was more of a referral type thing, but I I went, I did, you know, all the leg work and I was proud of that. Mm -hmm. So I don't count that as my first deal, but my, uh, <laughs> the person that leads my firm, he does. So the one I did all on my own, it, it took me, I think it took me like three months. It took me like three months. Is that average? I, I don't. Yeah, it probably depends, right? I, I guess every situation, I mean, I should know that, right, too, but there's every situation different and different finances and all the other things that got thrown into the mix. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was very, I mean, it's new, you know, mm -hmm. the terminology, it's like learning anything new, learning another language, learning the landscape, learning realtor, broker, real estate agent are all interchangeable, mm -hmm. unless, you know, it's just learn, just like learning anything new, it's like learning a new language, so yeah. it's pretty cool. But I, um, my question is, how many people do you work with at a time? Mm -hmm. Like, are you, um, like, do you have, like, a personal limit? So you can give them individual attention. Like, how does that work for you? Because you're kind of the boss of mm -hmm. you, in in a sense, right? Um, I haven't thought a whole lot about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have. Uh, right now, I probably have about four or five clients in my pipeline at different stages. So I might have someone that is um, like, hey, I'm I'm ready to sell my house tomorrow like when we find it let's list it let's do it I might excuse me I might have someone who um, is um, ready to purchase um, hey we're looking for a home um, can you help us um, we have a pre-approval mm -hmm. right so people at different stages of the process they need different things so mm -hmm. someone that um, has a pre-approval um, is uh, ready to go like it's just a matter of them, um, you know, finding a home that they like. Um, uh, it's the equivalent of being 
being in the mall and you know that direct deposit just hit it like you just mm-hmm. find it looking for the right thing right, right? so um but people at different stages of the process need different things if i got a first time home buyer in my pipeline i'm probably gonna spend i'm gonna spend significantly more time with them because i'm educating them through the process and you know it's a lot of nerves and just mm-hmm. new it's a lot of newness to it if i'm working with an investor they kind of know what they want what they want to do i'm just kind of facility they're kind of telling me what to do or what to find so um, we can close the deal so um, yeah I don't, I don't know what that number is um, if uh, hopefully I can get to a time where I'm like well you know what 30 people is <laughs> too much, <laughs> way too much I need some help so <laughs> do you um, oh my goodness I just forgot my question Oh, have you ever had to be in a situation where, like, maybe your client, whether they're buying or selling, or making a decision that you didn't necessarily agree with, but just kind of had to go along with, and you're just like, okay, it's gonna, it's, I gave you my advice, but you're gonna go this way and it's gonna do it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I always, you know, I, I give my two cents. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I say my advice. Well, I, I give the information, like the facts, right? And then I, I kind of give my two cents as, um, the realtor, you know, I've done my due diligence, and then at the end of that, I say, and you know, I work for you. So mm-hmm. whatever decision we make is based on um, what what you decide, because you know we have all the information. And we, you know, mm-hmm. Go from there. So. Now we do this career pathways to expose some of our young people to different career paths, and just kind of say, hey, you could do this too. Um, what do you think that like, is the like, characteristics that are needed for your career that like you know, the person of success, you want to be successful, you have to be this. What, what are some of those things? I think you have to be um, proactive. Mm-hmm. So you, you know, just waiting, you know, if I'm just sitting around waiting for clients, or I'm not cold calling or contacting people or, or reaching out to my circle, mm-hmm. I don't think I would have um, much success. So you want to be proactive. Um, you want to be um, organized, you want to have a system Mm-hmm. around what you're doing in some way shape or form mm-hmm. um, so you can you know actually uh, you know measure your progress know that you are um, meet the benchmarks mm-hmm. that you set um, and you want to be uh, well, have some perseverance mm-hmm. right because it you know it, it gets rough right um, it's the, you know the mark you know it's a seller's market now mm-hmm. um, what goes up must come down yeah. <laughs> at some point so it won't always be maybe as busy, so you want to make sure that, um, you know, you got some, some perseverance to uh, make it through some of the challenging times. Do you work with a lot of lenders and institutions that like banks or credit unions? Mm-hmm. So, um, not, not directly. So, um, we, of course, our firm has a preferred lender that we use, but mm-hmm. um, clients may, you know, they may want to go with whoever makes them comfortable if they have a bank or a lender or another institution that they choose. So um, at that stage of the process, I, you know, I'm checking in with the lender if I need some information, um, but that's pretty much the lender and the lender and the, the buyer, um, the lender and the buyer side mm-hmm. um, that we'll be working. But I'm always working to, you know, build those relationships and, expand my network and learn as much as I can to be able to help my clients. Right. Did you envision yourself in this career? Like, let's say when you were in high school, um, did you, I guess, did you see yourself on this path? No. (laughs) (laughs) It's, I'm, I'm kind of random. So, um, I, uh, I'm a, Degree from Marquette University. Mm-hmm. I have a master's degree from UWM. Um, in I'm, what, if you don't mind me uh, Culture Foundations of Education. Okay. Um, and I'm finishing another master's degree in, in curriculum and instruction with the um, licensure, in, um, with my teaching licensure. Okay. In English education. So okay. I was an English major at Marquette, mm-hmm. and I've taught for a couple of years coming out of Marquette. Taught a few more years, so teaching's kind of been my background. Um, youth work, upward bound, mm-hmm. um, that that whole thing. Um, and what else? Some entrepreneurial stuff is in there. Um, but I think as I got older, in the back of my mind, um, real estate. I didn't know 
in what capacity I be involved. Um, and I still don't, like even now, um, I don't like, my, my goal isn't to, you know, I wanna be salesperson of the year or anything. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna get on the investor side, so I'm positioning myself to be an investor, mm -hmm. um, to be able to you know have properties and, and do different things. So um, I felt like I'd be involved in some capacity. I just hadn't uh, researched enough to know what might interest me, and I, I just didn't take it serious. It, it just seemed really far off or just um, unattainable mm -hmm. at many times. And then as I kind of sat back and watched, you know, some of the people around me did some research. I'm like, I can do this. Right. Thing, so. Now you you have. You know, high school diploma, you have college degree, master's, and work on another master's. What is the minimum that you need to be a realtor? And I ask this because everybody's got different levels of, you know, what they're, they aspire to do or, or are capable of doing. And, you know, what, what would you say? I think you might have to fact check this. I think you just have to be 18. Okay. And complete the course. High school diploma. High school diploma. Maybe. Okay. Um, it might just be 18, honestly. Um, but it was that, uh, my course, how much was the course? It was less, like less than $500 mm. to pay for okay. the course. And then, um, I think I had to pay for the test mm -hmm. that Maybe I took. Maybe a few hundred dollars, right? Um, the, the test was probably less than a hundred dollars. Oh. Yeah, and yeah. then, and then there are, uh, fees associated with, um, Greater Milwaukee Association of Realtors. So it's like the entity that governs realtors okay. in, um, in the Milwaukee area. So you have to be a part of them to be considered, uh, to call myself a realtor, I have to pay that fee. Okay. I didn't know that when I got my license. I just thought, hey, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I, I, let me get on the firm. And mm -hmm. So I signed on with the firm and I'm ready to go. And they're like, you gotta pay this fee. And I'm like, what? And it was like no way around it. I'm like, what? So um, yeah, so okay. that was like the first being 18 and just, Mm -hmm. chunk it out from there. Okay. Um, Do you think coaching and mentorship matters in this field? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have great coaches and mentors. I was just on the phone talking with one of my colleagues, running some questions by them, some language in the contract. I was speaking with the realtor and they said something that I hadn't heard before and I was researching. And I called and they provided clarity for me. Thank you. It was, you know, what I thought it was. Um, because um, in this industry, you're dealing with big investments, a lot of money, and contracts, and you know, people can get sued, and a lot of bad stuff can happen. So you want to make sure you're um, doing the right things and saying the right things. And you know, if you don't know something, hey, let me let me get back to you on that. You know, I don't commit to anything or say anything. So, um, but mentorship and coaching is is huge because um, it's people. You know, people have different experiences. Um, there's a lot of people here that have a lot of experience and what can knowledge that mm -hmm. um, save others a lot of time just like in any in other industry. Right. I think there's a lot of fields. I'm, almost probably every field you get into, it's, a lot of it is who you know. Do you feel like that's there's a heavier focus in your field of like who you know and to be successful or not so much? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, think, I think knowing people helps. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to think I have a, a nice network of people, mm -hmm. um, and, and that really helps. So that if um, you know, I, I they do find out I'm a realtor, they see something, you know, they, they know I'm not selling a vacuum cleaner or something, right. or they're <laughs> trying to avoid me. Hopefully, but yeah, uh, I, I think that helps. Yeah, because the more um, you know, the more people you know, they know, and mm -hmm. things like that. So sometimes it, it hasn't been a like a primary source, but like a secondary, like. I know such and such, and they said that I should come to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay. Outside of the people you know, what is the best way to market yourself, you think? Mm -hmm. Facebook, probably. Mm -hmm. Facebook, and I'm working on that. Um, I'm not a big Facebook person. It's, it's a little overwhelming mm -hmm. <laughs> for me at times. It's just a lot, a lot, and my attention span is already like short, so. Um, but I, I think Facebook, um, I was speaking with, um, I think, oh, he's a home inspector. And I was asking him about it because he has a way of, um, he uses his personal Facebook page. And I was asking him about that. Like, man, I don't really want my personal. I want I got me a realtor page, and that's for that. And he was like, well, um, 
people's like if it's your personal page and you have a way uh, and you're not too like overbearing and you got a way to bring yourself to it you'd be surprised at how much people like latch on to it mm -hmm. and so i started watching his page and what he does and so he does inspections like he has a company and he does home inspections he's really good but he'll throw like jokes in and He'll have it'll be like a, a toilet, like no one ever cleaned, and he'll do crap. <laughs> you know, it'll be a caption with a joke, but it's like, hey, you know, this is my day to day, and this is what I do, and this is yeah. like what it's like. So he's made it, um, you know, kind of fun, and he's yeah. and it's still his personal page, and of course, it's professional too. Um, so definitely Facebook because the reach, like, you can like blast your page, you mm -hmm. can do, and I don't even know the ins and outs of it, but you have a it's almost unlimited Minimally reach. Minimally too, like it's yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I see you have some papers there. What are those? If you don't mind. Um, this is a uh, it's a packet of stuff. So a listing contract. This is um, if someone wants to sell their home, I uh, I have to have like a, a listing contract that lays out the um, specifics of what we're doing from you know how much we're listing it for street address, um, commission, mm -hmm. uh, different types of representation, right? So that like okay. solidifies that I can list this property. I also have to upload that information to this thing called the MLS, which is mm -hmm. um, where the um, where realtors um, post, you know, the properties. Yeah. We, we have to um, kind of put them there. Um, we have to have all the documentation intact mm -hmm. um, or we have to pay a fee. And I almost learned that the hard way when I first started. <laughs> I thought I posted something, and like, no, you got 24 hours. I was like, okay. Um, I also put, oh, I think this is this one's just a listing contract. Are you on listing contracts? Yeah. Okay. Listing contracts. I thought I had some off to purchase. They're just listing contracts. So. Okay. How long do listing contracts typically last for? Um, that's a great question. Um, I haven't. Uh, I might have like three and between three and six months for me, um, and that's like, hey, you know, we're uh, given this is the amount of time I predict we'll need to sell uh, your home. Um, once this time lapses, then this contract expires. Mm -hmm. um, even with that time frame, you um, we work with a lot of amendments too, so you can like update things and change things in the contract. So, uh, funny story, one day I was, uh, I, had, I had a listing contract that was like out live, and our firm had a, um, it's like a workshop around, you know, writing up contracts and covering some of the things. And I was on the fence about going because I didn't really have time, but I'm, uh, I'm like, I, I should go. Like, I need to, I felt like I need to go, so I'm gonna go, and I went. And uh, I went and um, one of my colleagues was presenting and she was talking about commissions, and the splits and how they work. And I found out that I, um, I wrote the wrong split for a commission. So um, on one of my listing contracts, I was giving the buying agent the entire commission oh. and I was getting zero. Oh my goodness. And, and my deal was in motion. Like if it would have closed, I, you know, if I would have been done, and I was asking her, you know, like, so you can't do this, this, and this? And then she was like, no. She's like, if you do that, you're gonna get my money. And I was like, oh. And so I went to her afterwards, and I was like, I made a mistake. What do I do? How do I fix it? She's like, oh, you just do this, this. So she uh, helped me, you know, find an amendment, mm -hmm. and I went and amended it. Had the, um, the seller sign and yeah. uh, the front person sign, but you can, you know, submit documentation to mm -hmm. amend things because they know we mess up. <laughs> Uh, any other questions anybody has? No? Um, oh. I have a closing question. Um, as a realtor, would you prefer the buyer side or the seller side of things? Ooh. Um, I think the seller side. The seller side. The seller, the seller holds all the cards. Mm -hmm. um, you got the house. People want the house. They come. Uh, true story. I was helping um, a friend. Um, their mom wanted to sell, and I was like, "Cool!" And you know, just kind of, "Hey, I heard from such and such that you were." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And we got on the um, 
the duo or something. We was on some Zoom or something like that. We mm-hmm. did, and we talked, and we spoke, and then I was like, all right, let's, uh, you know, uh, set up a time when I can come see the house and stuff was moving fast. She was like, you could just come by. Went by, I saw the house, I brought my colleague with me. She's really good. She took some really good photos. And as we're walking through and talking, oh, this is a really nice house. And I was like, I don't think it's going to be around. She was like, this house is not going to be around for a week. And then I'm like, I think you're right. So when we were done, I was letting the seller know, like, hey, because she was like, hey, I'm ready to go, pick up. I'm going to visit my grandbabies, and, you know, I'm ready to get out of here. And I was like, you sure? Is your stuff packed? Because this place, we don't think it's going to be around long. She was like, I'm ready. And I was like, all right. So I took the pictures. I listed everything on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. On Monday morning, she had um, a, um, a showing. So I just put a lockbox on it where people mm-hmm. would just come, but I can see the notification who comes. She had a showing. By Monday evening, she had a full price offer. And that was the deal. And it was a smooth deal from there. Wow. It was a, and that was, that was a day. I listed it Sunday. We accepted the offer, I think, Monday Monday evening. Wow. And that was the buyer side. And I was like, I mean, the, uh, the seller, seller side. side. Yeah. And I was like, cool. Very smooth, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you find that buyer through the MLS? No. Um, I knew just uh, personal relationships from people. And it was a referral that some somebody had told them that I was a realtor and that if they want to sell they should talk to me all right well thank you for coming and being part of this and um, we appreciate you Lindsay Crawford um, let's give them a round of applause